Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Inside Golf, and I'm Harry Donahue. Today, we're going to Aronomic, a look at this year's Jay Siegel Invitational Classic. 31st year that Jay has conducted this event. It's considered one of the premier outings in the Philadelphia area, and they have raised literally millions of dollars over those last 30 years for cancer research at the Abramson Center at the University of Pennsylvania. We'll talk to Jay and hear about how successful the outing has become. Also, we'll meet his honoree for this year's event. Charles Barkley, NBA Hall of Famer, TV star, nothing better than a conversation with Sir Charles. And we'll take a look at a new tournament series for Philly pros and eight amateurs. It was held at Applebrook. It's called the Silvercrest Cup. And we'll be here on the back deck at Lulu Country Club with our teed off panel. It's all coming up next right here on Inside Golf. The 26th season of Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. Your next golf getaway is in Valley Forge in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Visit valleyforge.org. By the First Tee Greater Philadelphia. The First Tee not only helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit firstteephiladelphia.org. By the Philadelphia Association of Golf Course Superintendents, a community of professionals enhancing the game of golf since 1925. Make sure you thank your golf course superintendent today. By the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. By Jersey Man and Philly Man Magazine, a digital publication and private business network. Read the current issue free at jerseymanmagazine.com. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia PGA section, the experts in the game and business of golf. Golf is the great equalizer. For many, this journey is an escape from reality, a chance to be part of a team, a career opportunity. PGA Reach impacts lives through golf by lifting people up, giving them hope, and sending them down an alternate path that they never saw coming. With PGA Reach Philadelphia, as in life and in golf, the most important shot you take is the next one. When you vacation in Montgomery County, PA, your money worries get a vacation too. Oh, you gotta get your value. Feel free to explore the soldiers' huts. Free? <laughs> Four bucks, that's it? Keep the lettuce coming, Diane. <laughs> It's free! Hey, it's free! With so many affordable things in Montgomery County, go ahead, freak out. <laughs> Welcome back, Inside Golf continues. We're at Aronomic for the 31st, hard to believe, 31 years, Jay Siegel Invitational to raise money for cancer research, prostate cancer, breast cancer, and patient care. 31 years, that's quite a legacy. Yeah, thanks, Harry. It's, it's, uh, it's been a lot of work, but we've had so many successes uh, that it's um, unbelievable, really. I, I'm just uh, ecstatic about it. What was the motivation? Well, early on, my dad passed away from cancer, and then Arnold Palmer got cancer, and Jim Colbert, my buddy, got cancer, Michael Milken got cancer, and um, just made sense to let men know they need to better prepare. Uh, for the future, so that's what we did. Yeah, and on a later note, you brought up Arnold's name. I've, I've had the chance to sit down and talk to Jay, both on camera and off, about his relationship with AP, and it dates back to when you were a youngster, mm -hmm. and your father had arrangements made for you to go out to La Trobe. <laughs> of course, Arnold's family owned La Trobe. Deacon Palmer did everything out there. He ran the pro shop. He was the yeah. superintendent. He was the pro. He was Arnold's teacher. He was Arnold's instructor. And you go out there for a lesson with Deacon, and he tells you, go out to the range, son. I'll be out there in a couple minutes. So you walk out there. You're what, teenager? Uh, I was 16, I believe, and I was. this was 8 o'clock in the morning. Arnold had already been hitting balls. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank I, God. Yeah. What it, happened it, next? <laughs> the first two or three I hit were shanks. Almost took Arnold's head off. Whoa! He you looked, weren't nervous, were you? Oh no, not much. He looked around like, who is this guy? Yeah. 
Did he say something like, you're supposed to hit it that way? No, no, he, 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 I'm sure he knew I was nervous and because he knew I, I, that I was seeing his dad. So Little did you know that in a few years you would win a scholarship to Wake Forest and that was set up by Arnold Palmer, who yes. was a deacon himself. That was the first Arnold Palmer scholarship to Wake Forest, which I, I'm delighted about. Does he remember that or did he remember that first time meeting you? Uh, well, we had met before that. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, I'm afraid to ask him. You know, there you go. You know, he's met so many people. Hey, you got Charles Barkley here. He's your honoree every year. You have some notable as your honoree, right. and uh, Charles is this year's. You ever play with Charles? Yes, a couple of times. He was here 20 years ago, and um, he was a hit back then. Uh, I used to follow him with the Sixers. Uh, if there was ever a loose ball, he got it. Uh, he never took took a play off. Uh, what what a scrambler! He he really played hard. So he's uh, he's a treat to have here. I know, and he just turned 60, and he's still out here meeting and greeting. He does it as well as any celebrity I've ever seen, or better, or better. Jay. Once again, congratulations. Thanks, Harry. Nice. 31 years and counting for Thank you. the great Jay Siegel. Thank you. Nice of you to be here. It's our Thank pleasure. You, uh, you know what? On the first hole, Charles is going to need a lift. I'm right here. Hey, how about the, me? I had a feeling about that Vikings game. They cover about half a point. Well, Charles Barkley joins us here at Aronomic. Charles, always a pleasure to see you no matter where, especially a golf course. You're the honoree for Jay's tournament this year. So uh, you've been an honoree all over the place, well, haven't you? It was, uh, I don't know, buying Jay uh, dinner and doing things like that got me an honoree, so it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, I'm glad to be here. It's a great cause. But I got to ask you a question. Sure. How long have you been stealing money? Uh, over 50 years, 50 years, and I haven't been in jail Cause, one cause day. Because I, I only have been still in like 23 years. For you to be doing this all these years, people must like you. Because well, in, in our business, if people don't like you, you're fired quickly. I have a likable personality, you know, I think. And uh, it helps in this business especially. Well, you must be a nice guy because you're not the best looking dude in the world. <laughs> I love the honesty from I'm Charles Barkley, man. Kidding, America. No. Well, it's, 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 well, I should say Philadelphia. You know, most of my career was in radio, and everybody says that's where I should have stayed instead of trying to make it like I have a television face. You know what, Charles? I'm so old, I don't give a damn what they say. You know, I used to make fun of old people. Now I'm one of them. It's not funny. Welcome to the crowd. You know, I just turned 60, and it's weird. I bumped into Dr. J recently. We used to give him a lot of crap, uh, me and Leon and Wood and the young guys, because him and Moses were like 35. We used to call him Grandpa, and that was 35. And now I'm 60. It's just so weird to say that. But, man, I've been blessed, and uh, I've been truly blessed. In Philadelphia, you know, I live here during the summer. What a great city. What a great city. And I will tell you what, man, some of the best golf courses <laughs> Uh, you know, people say, why do you live in Philadelphia? I said, during the summer. I said, well, Aronimic, Saucon Valley, Marion. Pine Valley. Pine Valley. <laughs> I mean, you know, Philadelphia Country Club, Philadelphia Cricket. I mean, you cannot beat the golf courses. It's all within a half an hour to 45 minutes. So, unfortunately, my summer is getting ready to come to an end. So, I got to head back to Arizona. But man, it's been a great summer, you know, and to finish it off with Jay making me an honoree at Aronimic is pretty special. You know what's pretty special too? And, and I speak as somebody who's been in broadcasting for over 50 years. The, the shows you do with Shaq and Kenny and Ernie on TNT, pre, halftime, post, are the best in that genre for any sport on any network I've ever seen. And it's all because of the, really, the authentic, uh, camaraderie, chemistry, whatever you want to call it, friendships that you guys display. You can't fake that, what you do, Charles. Well, number one, thank you for the kind words. Well, we, it should be fun because it's just basketball. We're not saving the world. That's true. We're not doctors. We're not teachers. We're not firemen. We're not somebody in the, in the, in the service. People I really admire. Doctors are like that also. It's just basketball. And so I said that's the main, main thing. We want people to, first of all, the game's always the most important thing, Harry. But you want people to watch the show and have fun. Hey, it, well, the only fake part is I really hate Shaq. I mean, I'm faking that. <laughs> That's a good fake. I mean, I know I love Ernie. I love Kenny. But Shaq is such a jackass. <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing. That's why I try to never make con eye contact with him because he's such a damn fool and idiot. 
I'm just kidding, big fella. Just you better kidding. be. I'm just kidding. Yeah, he's the biggest human being in the world. And look at you. You're down to nothing. You're almost playing weight, aren't you? Uh, you know, uh, you know, Harry, I got really fat the last, uh, well, for a long time. You know, I peaked out. I gained 102 pounds when I got my hips. And, I, you know, I was really in really bad shape. But my hips are great now, and I'm down 65 pounds. I'm going to lose another 15. Uh, I want to get to 270. My plan weight was 250, but my doctor, let's get me to 270. Because she said to me, hey, Chuck, there's no fat old people. And I said, what? She says, you got to get in shape because there's no fat old people. Hopefully I got about another six weeks before the season starts. So hopefully by the time the season kicks off, I'll be 270. And you'll be beating the jet to that screen every night. <laughs> well, I hope so. Uh, you know, Ken is a cheater though, <laughs> Harry. Ken is a cheater. If he thinks he's going to lose, he'll, won't, he won't, like if he, he tries to make sure nobody's going to, he want to sneak and get a head start. So, but you know, we've all beaten him at one time, but it's just a fun and thank you for the support. Well, always a pleasure, Charles. Thank you for supporting Jay Siegel's Invitational here and uh, go out there and knock him dead. Well, Jay, uh, it was really cool. Uh, you know, I've known Jay, I played with Jay a hundred times. He's always been great to me. And he asked me to come be the honoree. That's pretty cool. The only thing that was annoying, he said, you know, Harry Donahue. I said, yeah, I know Harry forever. He says, he wants to do an interview with you. I said, do I really have to do the interview? How much did he pay you? Come on. Uh, nothing. Did your agent get involved? No, my, no. We, I, didn't, I didn't take, it wasn't important enough to take to my agent. Oh, so, so we got a cop here today, folks. Yeah, yes. We're on scholarship. Yeah, yes, we with are. With a great guy. Hey, as Amar Rashad always said, Chuck, go your whole life on scholarship. That's what your key is. And, I, and hey, I'm on the 60. You're not letting them down, hey, are, are you? 60 year old. Mike, let's have father son do Let's have some fun. Always a pleasure to be with Jay Siegel and. Charles Barkley. Boy, he looks great, doesn't he? How about Charles dropping those pounds? All right, stay with us. More to come here on Inside Golf. This time we go to Apple Brook and a look at the recently held Silvercrest Cup. That's next on Inside Golf. Jay Wood Platt Caddy Scholarship Trust is the official charitable arm of GAP. The trust's mission is to financially aid and empower qualified caddies and those working in golf operations in the pursuit of higher education. Over $25 million has been awarded to more than 3,700 caddies. J. Wood Platt's Empower Program strengthens scholarship investment dollars by providing our scholars with exceptional benefits. Visit our website platscholar.org to learn more. For over two decades, First Tee has created experiences that build character. We believe every kid deserves to feel supported, safe to try something new, and to be prepared for what comes next. We develop their swing, but more importantly, their inner strength. Because we know what's inside doesn't just count, it changes the game. Come join us at First Tee. Welcome back to Inside Golf. This year was the second year for the Silvercrest Cup. It was played at Applebrook Golf Club. The Philly section has partnered with Silvercrest Asset Management Group, an investment advisor, to create the Silvercrest Cup. It is one of the more lucrative event series on the section's calendar, with Silvercrest contributing $50,000 as the event's title partner. The championship event invites the top 54 Philly area pros that earn points from their performances in four qualifying events. And there's also the top eight amateurs from GAP's Heidman Player of the Year list. Alan Gray is the managing director at Silvercrest. Uh, the tournament started out of our desire uh, to affiliate with a group of people that have the sort of same culture that we have, dedicating themselves to you know the craft that they've uh, decided to follow, the careers they've decided to follow. But they also spend most of their time working with the people that ask them to help them, their customers, the club members that they all represent, and spend most of their time worth 
they work tireless hours on the lesson tee, running tournaments, you know, taking care of all the things that their members want. Um, and then they finally get a chance to get out and, and play the game they love, which is, you know, competitive golf. Um, so we wanted to make sure that they had a venue and a tournament structure that allowed them to experience what we watch the people on TV experience, you know, every week. In addition to golf, as Alan mentioned, is a charitable component. Checks of $10,000 each were presented to Courtney Curcio of the Section's Charitable Foundation, PGA Reach, Philadelphia, and to GAP's Executive Director, Mark Peterson, for the J. Wood Platt Caddy Scholarship Trust. Uh, one of our uh, charitable um, sponsors, if you will, for us is the J. Wood Platt Caddy Scholarship Trust. So uh, our rule is that all the players have to walk and take a caddy along with them and uh, create a professional tournament uh, environment for them. Um, we do a lot of charitable giving. We have a lot of clients that we manage assets for. Um, we also have a big view on, you know, helping, uh, you know, our military folks, uh, you know, when they're coming back out of the military, whether they're wounded or injured. And so the Philadelphia Reach Foundation does a lot of that. And the J. Wood Platt Caddy Scholarship Trust obviously uh, works with caddies who uh, are trying to further themselves and, and pay for their education. So we feel strongly about uh, all of those things. Um, Push an incredible amount of excitement into our tournament program. Uh, as all of you know, Silvercrest is ball, pleased ball as to how the event has evolved and now is expanding their efforts. Awesome day here at Applebrook. Uh, many, many thanks to all the folks here at Applebrook who helped us put on another great tournament for uh, the local professionals in the Philadelphia section. Uh, we're in year two with the Philadelphia PGA section and also the Metropolitan New York section. Um, and this year we expanded it to the Middle Atlantic section, which covers the states of Virginia and Maryland uh, for all the same reasons we just talked about. Uh, we have clients in those areas. We have uh, office locations in those areas. Um, so we're out there in the community and we're getting to know the players that, that are working at various clubs that either we have the good fortune to be members of or that our clients have. Um, so we want to continue to, to grow uh, that kind of support uh, in different geographies. PGA professional Dave Padgett from White Marsh earned top honors along with defending champion amateur Andrew Keeling, <laughs> finishing with a three under par score of 68. So congratulations to both Dave and Andrew and to Silvercrest for making it possible. Right. Up next, our teed off panels are ready to go. Where you kind of can, you know, it, it makes for better drama. Welcome back, folks. It's time for our teed off panel to start talking about a golf topic here from beautiful Lulu in the back deck. And it is a beautiful sunny day here in Upper Dublin. We're glad that you could be sharing some time with us. Joe Logan is. Joe from MyPhillyGolf.com. Harry Mays loves to play the game up there in 1912, and he does his podcast when he's not playing golf. It's called Swing It and Ding It. And from GAP, the Golf Association of Philadelphia, where he is in his third year as the president of GAP, Oscar Mestre. Oscar, you know, uh, in the fall, we get a lot of match play every year, either the Ryder Cup, or Solheim Cup or President's Cup. And, and that's really one of the few times we get to see a lot of good golfers playing match play, okay? Back in the day, and I go back maybe 60, 70 years, that's all they did. Right. And then metal play became the, the game for professionals. And I think TV has a lot to do with that. But first of all, as a competitor, and you're, you're a high level competitor in amateur golf, not only in Philadelphia, but you know around the world, literally, you made it to, um, you know, the cut, two cuts at the recent British Amateur Senior Events, and uh, you got game. It travels the world. What's your favorite, medal or match? Well, my favorite is medal because I feel it's, it's the purest test, right? You've got to, um, you know, every shot counts. And uh, match, is, match is great in that you get to forget a shot. Maybe a double bogey doesn't, okay, let's move on. Move on to the next hole. one hole. Metal, you know, especially on a 36 hole qualifier where you're gonna make a cut, you've gotta really grind the whole time and, and hold it together. So it is the purest test. I will say that it also depends on the type of golf course. Some golf courses are really built for match play. They create a lot of excitement and a lot of decision making. Because like maybe it's a, 
a difficult par four or par five going for it in two on right. 18, risk reward like or that. a drivable par right. four risk reward and a long or a drivable three. or something yeah. like that where you kind of can you know it, it makes for better drama to to if it comes down for to a that. certain format right um, but the truth is as you said it used to be you would watch pros only play match play that was all the majors and we've gone to very little. And I, and I think you hit it on the head. It has a lot to do with TV, right? Yeah, because if you go to a single elimination, and on Thursday, for instance, and it happened, Harry, right down at the Austin, the Dell match play event mm -hmm. a few years ago when they started that thing. Uh, if you lost your first match, it was bye-bye. See ya. Yeah. You know? So you could have the elite players, so-called, be gone by the time you got to Saturday. Not good for yeah. television. I do agree with Oscar, though, that you know, stroke play, metal plays is the ultimate test. But as a man who's made his share of double bogeys, <laughs> I love match sure. play even more because, sure. like you said, you get to throw it out. You get one or two bad swings on a hole; it's not gonna, it doesn't stay with you. It's right. gone by the next tee, and, and you're back in the, you're back in it. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's just more fun to play for me. When you get together with some friends, uh, and you play Lulu a lot, and some other places, Joe. Uh, if you play traditionally, it's all match play. Tends to be match play. And I, I agree Little Nassau action. Yeah. It's a uh, supreme test, the stroke play. But I prefer, actually, match play for amateurs and stroke play for pros because amateurs tend to have blow-up holes. Yep. Mm -hmm. you never mind a double bogey. You make a nine or a ten right. on the third hole, you're done. You're out of it. You know, stroke, match play lets you fight back from that kind of blow-up and have a chance late in the round. Uh, is it take a different mindset regardless good amateur bad amateur good pro not so good pro elite pro uh when it comes to match played like do you play pay more attention to your what your opponent is doing in match play than you do in metal play i would say that unintentionally you do right i mean it, i always find it fascinating if you're playing in a metal round of golf somebody hits a good shot you go great shot mm -hmm. but somebody does that to you in match play and you go like what? I can't believe they did that to me. Put the you pressure take it personally. On. Yeah. You take it personally. They make a putt, they made it on me as opposed to the field. I, I find that, that kind of dynamic fascinating. Um, but you really, you tend to watch what's going on a little bit more in match play, which is, can, be the, can be the absolute wrong thing to do. Right. Yeah, you may, if your partner, not your partner, but you know, who you're playing with, the competing yeah. against, is um, you know, all of a sudden like out of bounds or something like that, you're not risking getting that second Correct. shot on a par five on Correct. the green. Right. You're going to manage the golf Correct. course a little differently, right, Joe? Does uh, the old, you know, edge of war, you know, when your opponent is self-destructing, stand back and give them room. <laughs> <laughs> well put. Well put. Harry, uh, have you ever run into problems in match play, and if you play a lot, I'm sure you do, with conceding putts? And that seems to me to be the one element in match play yeah. where things can get testy, especially if you're playing somebody you don't know that well. well or maybe you know him a lot. Yeah, there's certain players. And you know he can't putt. At my club <laughs> that, that don't give any putts, and you just know who those guys are, and you know you're going to have to putt everything out, even if it's in, inside the friendship zone, yeah, yeah, so yeah. to speak. But uh, There is no friendship zone in golf, <laughs> is there? Come on. <laughs> Not where you come from. <laughs> They're I the most you. fun putts to have to make, though, knowing that everybody's watching you, right. and you got a two and a half, three footer that you got to put in the center of the cup and make it hit the back of the cup. I have a philosophy on all that. If your competitor has to ask, "Is that good?" It's not good. Put it. You agree? I agree. Okay. Or as a friend of mine used to say, when they said, "Is that good?" His reply would always be, "It's not bad." <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. More of Inside Golf in just a moment. Designed by Donald Ross, Lulu Country Club is one of the premier private golf courses in Montgomery County. This classic 18-hole course boasts a new state-of-the-art clubhouse with many amenities for members to enjoy. Members are invited to play in events, tournaments, and enjoy guest privileges. For more information, contact membership at lulucc.com. Yes! With so many affordable things to do in Montgomery County, PA, go ahead, free out. The Golf Association of Philadelphia, founded in 1897, GAF is the nation's oldest regional or state golf association. 
We serve amateur golf in Eastern PA, Southern New Jersey, and all of Delaware. Gap welcomes all golfers, junior or senior, male or female, public or private. Join the Golf Association of Philadelphia today. Our mission is always to preserve, protect, and promote the great game of golf. Before you tee it up, look us up. Visit gapgolf.org to find out more. Hi, Tony Salucci with the Beacon Group of Companies. If your company has between 50 and 500 employees enrolled in your health insurance plan, there's a really good chance we can reduce your costs significantly and increase the benefits employees receive. How do we do it? We put you together with several thousand employers of a similar size across the country so your company can get amazing buying power. Schedule a conversation with one of our employee benefits specialists today at mybeacongroup.com. That's it for this week's edition of Inside Golf. Looking ahead on the calendar in upcoming weeks, one really special interview you're going to see is with Jim Aaron. Had his own construction company. Now he's a consultant to a lot of country clubs in the area as well as across the country on additions and improvements at their clubhouses. A lot of new amenities that maybe 10 years ago nobody thought of doing at a golf club. It's going to be a show you will not want to miss. I'm Harry Donahue. See you next week here on Inside Golf. The 26th season of Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. Your next golf getaway is in Valley Forge in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Visit valleyforge.org. By the First Tee Greater Philadelphia. The First Tee not only helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit firstteephiladelphia.org. By the Philadelphia Association of Golf Course Superintendents, a community of professionals enhancing the game of golf since 1925. Make sure you thank your golf course superintendent today. By the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. By Jersey Man and Philly Man Magazine, a digital publication and private business network. Read the current issue free at jerseybandmagazine.com. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia PGA section, the experts in the game and business of golf.